Okay, welcome back everyone. It is uh, 7.19 of 2015. We're going to take a look at uh, Brentano's later work in his career when he was uh, discussing the continuum of time and space. And we're going to take it up as a just introductory material to begin with. He begins with the sensate realm of primary presentation. And he says that we are presented with five dimensions of primary presentation. The uh, two-dimensional length and width the qualitative depth as a third dimension, the possibility for the emergence of the good as a fourth dimension, and then the actual temporal continuance of movement and rest as the fifth dimension. And the temporal continuum will enclose primary categories and concepts that are abbreviated under the category. So we are going to have a presentation of major primary categories and subsystem signs and concepts. So we have primary spatial continua with their qualitative depth and secondary spatial continua with their qualitative depth in the five-dimensional presentation. Now the second moment of spirit of the psychical realm is where the work gets done of constructing this continuum. It is a perception phenomena. It is a secondary object derived from the sensate and our mechanical memory will, will store the sensible impressions of the continuous in order that we might have that lexical content to form our modeling. It's a three-step methodology of first existentially grasping the intuitive sensate parts that coincide within a generalization. Then we do the first analytical work of forming the generalized abstraction for the boundary of the coinciding parts. And then we do the deeper analytical work of raising that generalization and boundary to a signification of a true eschatological continuum. A true eschatological continuum rather than a generalized boundary. With all of its interrelatedness between the signs, the categories and the signs. He gives the model a very specific name in this particular volume. He calls it a rayism of pleurosis. Now, pleurosis is the filling of a boundary to its complete dimensional state. And rayism says that the category of things is the sole ontological category. So rayism is telling us that the category of things is the sole ontological category. Therefore, how do we define the concept thing? Well, for Brentano, that's equal to Aristotle's categories or it can be any sign that references the concrete from the primary presentation. So thing equals signs of the concrete, significations. So the third methodolo methodological moment equals this model of construction of a rayism of pleuros pleurosis, and that is a model tension between the fundamentum and the terminus, or the fundamentum posited ideality of our model, which seeks actuality or a terminus of a praxis and actuality dialectic. So the temporal continuum is always an imp a model that implies non-existence, is a model that seeks actuality as a positing of a probability, not a certainty. It seeks certainty. It seeks a return of recognition. It seeks a recognition of universality that we are positing that which is a universal, and we seek a recognition of intersubjective return as the return of knowing. So he says in the third moment that the positive rayism of pleurosis is a probable temporal continuum. Not a certain temporal continuum, but a probable temporal continuum that exists only as a positive boundary of, of expectation or anticipation of a universal return. It's a now tension between the past and the future. We seek a full pleurosis or a full enabling and actuality of every enclosed dimension within the boundary of the eschatological model that we have posited according to its relational trajectory and its relational fullness. So we are taking up that presentation of the length, width, qualitative depth the possibility for the good, and the temporal continuance of movement and rest. And then by 
intuitively engaging that five-dimension presentation, we will intuitively grasp the sensate parts that coincide within a general framework, that, that species and genus framework. But then we want to raise that to signification. So even though we do at first form a generalization of a boundary, we want it to become an eschatological trajectory, not just a generalized boundary. And so to make it an eschatological trajectory, we must move all of the parts to the level of signification or sign or, if they are primary, category. We want to lift those to category or to sign. And then we've got the material to form that rayism of pleurosis model. And it is uh, a, the complete dimensional state of the eschatological boundary that we see and that we are trying to articulate as an eschatological model of positing of what we see as a probability for emergence. We don't see it as an absolute certainty of emergence, but we see it as a probability for emergence. We see a tendency in actuality toward emergence. And so where you're positing toward a tendency, you're positing toward the possibility. I remember for Brentano, possibility was one of the dimensions of actual uh, concrete presentation. So he considers this uh, tendency, this potentiality, this dunamis toward the possible as one dimension of the uh, primary presentation, which will inform our perception and our modeling of this uh, rayism of pleurosis. We need to uh, form the uh, rayism boundary, the uh, boundary that encloses the things, which are going to be signs of the concrete. But then we want to take up the work of pleurosis of filling that boundary by filling it with a signifying content, content of signification. And so we take the uh, boundary itself, we raise it to a eschatological trajectory that gives the boundary a signification. And then we raise the parts that are generalized to signs of the concrete. And it gives us that uh, model of a rayism of pleurosis. So we can see that Brentano is very consistent with what he's done in epistemology. He's very consistent with what he's done in ethics. He is truly keeping us centered within the the dialectic between the realm of sensate primary presentation and the psychical realm of secondary presentation where we confront secondary objects with our experience, which is existential and analytic. It's a twofold experience. But we confront that uh, presentation of the continuum as a spirit presentation. The eschatological trajectory of reality is a spiritual presentation a psychical presentation as a secondary object, and we take that up to form our probability model of where we see that spirit headed toward actualizing the good, if we remember his ethics, the Greek good, the concept of uh, ethical nobility. And so it gives us a very first look at his uh, introductory comments. It just really is just getting us just launched into the volume but we will continue on from uh, page 18 onward and continue with uh, Brentano's discussion of the time-space continuum.